Good morning. Therapeutic Consulting Services has been the only qualified body providing litigation guardian services to the courts of Bermuda. I have been providing these professional services since 2014. To date, the practices and processes that we have embraced have continued to place the child as the priority, which the Children Act 1998 requires. I have provided presentations to various community and professional organizations with the sole purpose of educating the community on the role of the litigation guardian. I have provided litigation guardian services for 35 children since July 28, 2014. My services are initiated by way of the court's appointments and I am summoned to appear on behalf of the children. It is noted that the courts failed to appoint any litigation guardians for 16 years until my appointment in 2014. Unfortunately, despite the Bermuda government's repeated assurances that I would be paid for my services, payment has not been received for any of the children that I represent. After much consideration, the only other recourse I have is to step down as litigation guardian at this time in order to pursue legal action against the Bermuda government due to their failure to pay for my services. I am hopeful that there can be a swift resolution so that the children are not placed at risk. I'm not at liberty to speak to that at this time. I cannot speak to that at this time. Okay. Can you explain a little bit about, you, you talked about you represented 35 children. What kind of cases are we talking about here that, where, where you get involved? Um, the cases include children who have been removed from their parents or family, children who are at risk of being removed, children who have been removed from the jurisdiction, um, children whose parents may be going through the process of a divorce. The um, scope of the background var is varied. We're talking about children though who are by definition at risk of children, is that right to categorize them in that way, children who are in vulnerable positions? Perhaps? Well, all children are vulnerable by reason of the fact that they're children. But these would you say are particularly vulnerable or in particularly vulnerable situations? Potentially. Yes. Okay. Now you mentioned in, in, you mentioned in your comments these repeated assurances where, where would we find these repeated assurances? Has it been correspondence to you publicly said, or where have those assurances come from? In correspondence to me directly. Okay, so maybe we could take a look at some of that um, afterwards. Um, can you go into a bit more detail about why you're coming off the record? You obviously, you, you've given a, a, a brief summary of why, but, mm -hmm. but can you just elaborate? Um, I'm coming off the record because I am pursuing legal action, but also the process of providing this service for four years has not been without consequence. Um, one can assume what that may look like when one has provided a full-time service and has not been paid, and I can no longer afford to function like this, nor can I, nor can I continue to place my family at risk. When you get appointed by the courts, it's usually like a, um, a judge or a magistrate that's correct. Do there is a discussion then about payment for you? Does that come up actually in the court proceedings? Or, or is that almost just implicit in being appointed? I'm not generally in court at the time of appointment, so I cannot speak to what conversations are had in that moment. What does, what's the outcome of this? You, you coming off the record for the, in these cases, what, what does that mean for the children? It means that their needs will go unmet. Each child that I represent has a lawyer. I am required to give that lawyer instructions. Without me being on the record, the lawyer is unable to advance any legal action or any um, ongoing proceedings on behalf of the child because the lawyer would not be instructed by me with regards to what's in the best interest of the child and what the child needs to protect their welfare. So unfortunately, um, it will cause a bit of a delay in the process, which is contrary to the spirit of the legislation. Is it more than just a delay, though, in that the Children Act says that children, where children need an education guardian, they should have one? So is it more than just a delay, is it? It's a breach. 
it's a breach of the act. Yes. If they don't have one and they need one. That's my interpretation. I'm not a lawyer, but that's certainly my interpretation. And is there any other, are you aware of any other, uh, anyone else offer, offering what you offer or what offering litigation guardian services? Or? It's been suggested that there are, but I can't confirm um, for certain, but I have received information that there are potentially other people who have in the past provided the service. This morning, regrettably this morning, um, we've received notice from Ms. Tiffany Thomas, who's a litigation guardian in a number of matters involving children. Um, I happen to be the counsel for a number of those matters. And since receiving the notice from Ms. Thomas, um, I'm unable now to take instructions because Ms. Thomas represents the children, gives me her instructions, and then I uh, represent their, their legal interests in court. Um, so, unfortunately, I am now unable to represent those children in court, which means that there are a number of children who have no protection in the court process whatsoever until this matter is resolved. Wisely, one of the provisions that had been ignored uh, by a lot of practitioners in Bermuda, um, which Ms. Thomas has now enforced, is that whenever there is any correspondence regarding a child and the child's names are, um, are uh, anonymised by using just initials and just case numbers, which is obviously protecting the child's privacy in case the, the letter happens to find itself um, in the wrong hands. So when I look through the list of cases that Ms. Thomas is withdrawing her services, I see case numbers and abbreviations for names. I can recognise some of those as being my clients, but um, because it's just names and initials, I'd have to check to see exactly which ones are my clients. There was the, recently there was a story about um, Alfred Mabry that um, became public about the director of child family services being suspended and it was in relation to an incident with um, a young boy, I think, and a, an, an alleged assault. Yes. Is that one of these cases? That, is, that, is, that, is that minor one of these? Um, I think with that case, um, that is not on that list. Um, I would have to seek some a direction from Ms. Thomas about that. It, it, it's probably because that case um, is in a, a particular state at the moment that it may be that Ms Thomas has decided it's best to be involved in that case until that matter is resolved. So in practical terms you now can't, you cannot do anything because there has to be this intermediary if you like of the, yes. of the litigation yes. guardian. So can you go to court and explain that? Like will you do that in each of these cases? Or yes, in each of the cases I, I will have to appear in court and, and state that I can no longer take instructions um, and... Can the children in any of them give you instructions directly? Um, it would depend on the age and the ability of the child to give instructions. Some children have um, cognitive issues, so even if they're old enough in theory to give instructions direct directly, um, they're not old enough. Um, uh, they're not called gimmick competent um, because of their um, cognitive deficiencies. But I'd have to look through the, through the um, list of cases to be sure. Um, what about your payment for your services? Do you get paid for your services? No. Since, since 2014, it was the first case, although the Children's Act is from 1998 and the provision of Section 35 has been in that Act since 1998, it wasn't until 2014 that the courts ever enforced it. Um, but it was a mandatory obligation to provide litigation guardians for a child unless satisfied that it's not necessary to protect the, the uh, welfare of the child. Um, some of the magistrates have been surprised to have their attention drawn to Section 35, which gives you a, a view of how the courts have been operating until 2014. So for 16 years, uh, the courts failed to even consider Section 35, let alone appoint a litigation guardian. Um, so in 2014, I, I was appointed uh, in the first case where a lawyer was appointed to represent a child. Um, and it required me to attending um, to make the argument that a lawyer should represent the child and that a litigation guardian should also be there to, uh, to protect the child's welfare. So you do it pro bono? And, and no, well, I don't do it pro bono. So how um, does it work we, we, Well, our expectation has always been to be paid. Um, anybody who works in a profession should be paid for their services, particularly Miss Thomas, because the work that's required to be a litigation guardian is very burdensome. You're available 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, it's very stressful, as you can imagine. Some of those children are, are involved in uh, 
traumatic environments and Miss Thomas can sometimes be the first port of call if there's a problem. So certainly um, she needs to be paid, as do I. As do I or as so you're firm. in the same position as her in a sense, but you're, you're because you haven't been paid for any of the work you've done either, is no, that right? We, we were, no, we were given an indication we were going to be paid. Who from? Uh, from the Attorney General's Chambers. Uh, but we... When was that? It was 2016, but we've never been paid. And you've obviously uh, tried to seek that payment and to... to uh, how have you gone about that? Yes, I can't go into the details of that because I'm still ongoing. But um, it's unfortunate that Miss Thomas has been put in the point, in the position, where she has to take legal action. If we look at, let's just consider it, since 1998, the Children's Act has required the magistrate's courts to appoint litigation guardians in the vast majority of cases. And it was never done for 16 years. Then uh, a good soul comes forward, being Miss Thomas, who fortunately was very qualified for the position and has an excellent uh, has set an excellent standard in terms of the role of a litigation guardian. So she appears in 2014, so the courts don't enforce it for 16 years. Miss Thomas then agrees to be appointed since 2014, and then the government refuses to pay her. When this began, when you both began working on these cases in 2014, was your expectation just that payment would come from government? funds and that that's absolutely, how it would work. Yes, absolutely. And then yes. as time's gone on it's sort of just become apparent that that isn't happening. It's been apparent that, they've been, that, that they have not paid us but um, we didn't want to put the children in a position where they didn't have representation, that they didn't have a litigation guardian. So we continued to appear hoping the matter would be resolved. But when we look at Miss Thomas withdrawing her services I know that she's done that with a very heavy heart. Um, she takes her role extremely seriously um, but it's just as much as if teachers if the government had said tomorrow we're not paying any teachers we're not going to pay any nurses I'm sure many of those teachers and nurses would carry on working for a period of time because they feel obligated to but it would come to the point where they cannot continue to do that service and presumably you have a somewhat heavy heart as well yes it's very unfortunate it's unfortunate that we're in a system where our most valuable asset being children are not having the protection that the law has required them to have and then the government is refusing to pay when someone tries to give them the protection that the courts require them or the law requires them to have. It's a, it's a, a very astonishing situation. And it's also coming about as this situation is unfolding at Child and Family Services where we have you know, the director suspended and, and accusations being made about the way staff uh, are treating the children in their care. So it just adds, I guess, to the, for the children who are these children, it just adds, presumably, for them to, the, to, to you know, the situation that they're in. Well, if we consider that for the 16 years where no litigation guardians were appointed, uh, we don't know what has happened to those children in that system. But we know that children have been sent abroad to secure treatment facilities in America without any legal advice. We know that children have been held at Mid-Atlantic Wellness Institute without any legal advice. We know that children have been removed from their families without the child having any legal advice. We know that children have been provided or forced to take medication without any legal advice whatsoever. In some of those cases, a child simply has to say, I don't want to do that, and then everything stops and they can't force uh, someone to go abroad, for example, or to have treatment. Um, we know that some of the children were told if they were, when they were going abroad that they were going to go snowboarding and go camping, and then they ended up in a secure treatment facility for three years. Now, none of those children at that time had the benefit of a litigation guardian. It is extremely likely if they had they would not have ended up where they ended up. And now if we look at what's happened since Miss Thomas has been appointed as a litigation guardian, we've had children who've been unlawfully imprisoned released. We've had children who've been unlawfully detained at Mid-Atlantic Wellness Institute released. We've had children who've been denied an education, given an, edu an education. We've had children who have been removed from their parents 
brought back to their parents because in all those scenarios it transpired that the actions had been unlawful and the only way that the, the situation was resolved for the uh, positive for the child was because the child had the benefit of a litigation guardian and a lawyer and now we're in a situation it has to be connected that through Miss Thomas' involvement and her access to the files of the Department of Child and Family Services, which is one of the um, statutory powers that the litigation guardian has, we now are in a situation where we understand from reports that the director has been suspended and there's an investigation ongoing. Now, we don't know what the results will be from that investigation, but we know that for 16 years the department did whatever they wanted to do without anyone challenging it legally. This, this comes down to the, the children's human rights, doesn't it? Surely? Absolutely. I mean, there's the, if I we've had since Mitch Thomas has been involved, we've done appeals, judicial reviews, constitutional claims, and human rights uh, complaints. Now, who is going to make those legal arguments or initiate proceedings for those children moving forwards? Nobody. I mean. Not, and unfortunately, the courts are still not provide, are still not enforcing Section 35, but they're required to. In the vast majority of cases, a child is supposed to have a litigation guardian, and yet the courts are doing it in the very minor, sorry, the, the very small minority of cases the courts are doing it. So again, all of those children going through the system, who is protecting their legal rights? How do we know that their legal rights are being protected? How do we know they're being sent abroad lawfully, taken from their children lawfully? We don't. Do you have any concerns about the um, government investigating itself? Basically? Well, if there is an allegation, um, certainly if there's an allegation of assault, for example, uh, against a child, you would expect that that allegation would make its way to the police. Right. Um, I don't know if that allegation has made its way to the police. You I haven't also been informed. I haven't been informed. But you would expect, as I'm the child's lawyer, I would know if the police are investigating it. Um, we've also been, uh, since the letter that was released to the public, which was not released from us, um, that happened to be a, a communication from me, we've had, we've been inundated with anonymous emails, phone calls, people stopping us in the streets to tell us things that have happened to them. Um, and we've been given uh, evidence of, uh, or alleged evidence, of misdoings. Um, and we've heard that there's been an assault that took place, at least one assault back uh, in 2013. Um, so all those things have come to light because of Miss Thomas, essentially, being involved in cases representing children, and now people are trusting her. And so they're providing this information to Miss Thomas, which has now obviously led in some way to this investigation. Did you, did you get a re, uh, response to your letter to the Minister? I can't speak to that, I'm afraid so. Why not? It's a privilege. Oh, just to say whether you got a response or not? Yes, at oh, this stage. Okay. Um, what's the, imp the legal impact on Miss Thomas for basically breaching her court order? Well, I, I would say she's, uh, I, I accept the point that there's an order that's requiring her to yeah. provide these services. But just as a lawyer, often we're required to provide services for a client. Mm. Um, if the client can't pay or if legal aid is somehow uh, delayed, we appear in court, we explain the situation and the court um, regrettably has to adjourn the matters until the payment okay. is resolved. So Miss um, Thomas is likely to be in the same position. Mm. And we hope that the courts will take it very seriously and apply pressure where it's needed to say this service is essential and we cannot move forward. The child's constitutional rights are being breached because they cannot have a fair trial if a person who's been appointed to represent their interests is no longer there. Is right. the alternative though that they will actually just continue proceedings without representation of the kid? Well, if we consider that the courts have for 16 years not appointed litigation guardians and are now doing it in a very minor amount of case, uh, minority of cases, that may be the eventuality. Uh, is it your position that Bermuda is actually breaching international human rights law? Yes. And what kind of communication have you had 
with the, um, the FCO or the Governor of Bahamas? I can't speak to that at the moment because something is ongoing uh, with respect to that. But through the appointment of Miss Thomas, it's been revealed that children, and particularly vulnerable children, are not getting the protection that they deserve, but also the protection that they're owed in law. And perhaps one of the reasons is because we have not, uh, in fact, uh, adopted the human rights that they are provided for on an yeah. international level. 